Now we go to the next process. Are you still with me? Then we can go further. Centrifugation. Centrifugation in dairy industry is applied to obtain skim milk and cream, like to separate cream away from skim milk. Cream is actually milk with a lot of fat globules. In chapter 2, we already discussed fat globules. They have lower density compared to the plasma. Okay? So we can use centrifugation to separate them. And then when we have a lot of them, we call cream. And then the next step after that, the two fractions can be mixed again to have desired fat content. They separate and then combine again at a certain fat content. If you want to make skim milk, then you just remove the cream and don't combine it back. If you want to make half fat, like 1.5, 1 1.8% of fat, then you mix a certain percent of cream back to skim milk, and so on. Centrifugation then can be also applied to remove visa borders or applied to remove bacterial spores. So now here we discuss the application, the general application of centrifugation. Okay. Uh, there is a process that they can use to apply spore. And this process is called bactofugation. Remember the term. Bactofugation is actually centrifugation, but it is applied to remove spores of bacteria. Now we discuss a little bit the theory. We already saw this equation. This equation is called stock law. The stock equation to estimate how fast, this is the velocity, how fast the fat globules or the fat droplets will separate from uh, an emulsion. If they have larger diameter, they will separate very fast. If they have high difference in density between the P is plasma, and F is fat. If the difference in density is higher, if the size is larger, then they move up very fast, they separate very fast. If the viscosity of the system is high, then they separate slowly because this is at the lower part here. This is the stock law. I just remind here again so you know what is plasma, what is fat. From milk, if we remove the fat globule, and the remaining is called plasma. Exactly now, from now on, we call the skim meal. Similar like skim meal. But now we study about centrifugation. So we have a factor here. We have a constant here, a Z. Z is centrifugal constant. So this Z is equal to like this. This is the radius of the orbital bus, the radius of the rotation. Okay, the centrifuge rotation, and then n is the number of revolution per minute. How fast you do the centrifugation? How many rounds per minute? Right. So if you do very fast, then this constant become high, and then the velocity, the sep the separation become faster. Or if the rotation, if the mass of the rotation is larger, then this is larger, and then the separation is also faster. Right. Now we look at the different types of centrifuges. Centrifuges are the machines which are used to do centrifugation. Centrifugation is a process. Centrifuges are the machines, are the instrument to do that. In the past, they used this centrifuge. They used tubular bow centrifuge. But nowadays, in dairy industry, they only apply this. They call this bow centrifuge. But we look at the left first. Okay, see the feet? This enter here. And then you have, this is the casing outside only, the, the house outside. And then here, the feet, we enter here. And you have, this is a rotor, the one that rotate inside, okay. So you rotate fast enough, 
and then the part the fraction that have higher density will move further to the border far away the center and because the heavier fraction move far away from the center so it put the lower density part to be inside the center and then here is that there is a hole here that collect the part the fraction which far away from the center we call it heavier face and then the one inside here is now collected here outside here so we have lighter phase so if we put milk here into the system we obtain here cream and we obtain here plasma or skim milk skim milk has higher density so it's pushed further away from the center gọi là ly tâm có nghĩa là lực làm cho vật chất tách ra khỏi tâm cái nào mà tỷ trọng lớn hơn nó tách ra nhanh hơn mạnh hơn now we go to the right system where it's actually applied widely nowadays in dairy industry in cooking oil industry as well if you have visited a factory where they do cooking oil refined oil you will see this system it's called this bowl centrifuge what do you see here the milk is entered in the middle now let's go here let's go to here and they have a stack i mean a series of plates but it's like a bowl it's like a cone like nong la you know nong la in vietnamese it's a hat like this okay but there are so many cones so many plates like that and then on the plate there are a holes they here make a hole and the meal will follow this hole follow this hole to fill food into the system and then the whole stack of plates whole stack uh, series of the cone will be rotated very fast It's rotate like this very fast okay and then when the rotation like that occur the centrifugal force will bring the heavier fraction here to the border would we push the one with lower density to the center and then actually the cream will go to the center we go up here and then there is a hole opening here to collect the cream and the fraction that go outside here which have heavier density will move up here up here and then here you have separated milk or skim milk separated milk is the same term like skim milk yes between the plates you see there is a gap there's always a gap between the plate for milk to to move inside i hope you understand and then in the laboratory exercises you will see this system in the lab we have a small system you can open it and you you can see the same or similar and this is a centrifuge um this both centrifuge in industry inside here there are plate inside you don't see because this is the casing outside huh? and then the motor here the engine here which very strong with very robust because we, we generate very high rotation speed as I, i think it's like five or six thousand per minutes it's very fast now we discuss the centrifugation parameters Parameter là thông số. What are the important parameters of this process that determine the performance of this process? Because this machine is already fixed the rotation, the revolution per minute, they already fixed. You cannot change that anymore. Actually, the rotation speed is very important parameter, but they fix it, so we don't discuss this anymore. So now there's another parameter which is important is the temperature of the milk. It's important. Normally they increase the temperature of milk to 45 to 55 before centrifugation. Why they need to do this? If you look back the stock equation, what is the stock equation again? It's small r square and then the density of plasma, the density of fat And then here you have night time of viscosity. We check again if that is correct. Okay, it's correct. 
and then you have to multiply by a gravity here as well so this is the stock law and then multiply by a centrifugal constant then you have how fast separation of the cream when they increase the temperature to 45 to 55 then the viscosity is reduced when you heat up a liquid then actually the viscosity is reduced when viscosity is reduced then this one is increased right good and then when you do this as well this difference is the increase uh, the difference the difference in density between plasma and fat is also increased and this increase then this make this increase that is the objective of increase the temperature at this level to do centrifugation one other factor is as well is that if we do this at 4 degrees C you remember before that milk is storage the storage of milk is carried out at 4 degrees C and now before centrifugation they have to heat up to 45 degrees C to do but they don't do at 4 why not 4 they don't do at 20 45 because of this because of this but because of another factor because at 4 degrees C the fat inside the fat globule is solid if you remember chapter 3 we discussed already at low temperature at 4 degrees C maybe like 55 or 45 percent of fat here is already hard crystallized in solid when they are solid and when you do centrifugation the fat the, the solid the hot fat globule will hit each other when they hit each other they may get broken uh, they may break and this is not good when they increase to 45 the fat inside will be liquid the fat inside will be liquid and then the fat globule are kind of soft when they are soft when they hit each other they will not break easily Okay. this is also another reason why they work at 45 instead of 4 then why not 75 degrees C why not increase up to 75 it's not necessary and it's also not good because you increase a lot of temperature you lose energy you also may have precipitation some whey protein get precipitation and then they deposit in the instrument deposit in the machines and it's quite difficult to to clean when you heat too much you also lose nutritional content as well okay there's a number of reasons why we should not work at very high temperature 45 55 is suitable to do the centrifugation now we discuss a little bit the performance of a separator separator is a centrifuge to separate creams from the skin meal it's called separator but actually you can it's it's, it's a centrifuge yeah. the performance là hiệu quả hoạt động yeah. performance of the instrument is just is evaluated by the residual fat content in the skin meal in the separated meal and this is determined by an E. E is degree of cream separation. E is equal to total fat that we obtain in the cream divided by total fat in the whole beginning meal. Normally, it's below one, of course, because we cannot separate more than what it has inside the whole meal. So, when e is near to one then this is good when e is too low compared to one then the separation is not good and e is got degree of cream separation remember this term you may you see in the exam as well so the e is influenced by what factors we want to improve the e to have better separation e is determined by the function of the separator how good the machine is Okay, if you buy this machine from company A from or from company B, then normally it's, it's not the same. Uh, the same. The functioning can be better for this, can be worse for the other one. Then the E is determined by the temperature. We already discussed that if we work at 45 to 55, we have a better separation. We have a lower viscosity. We have a higher different in density. And then we have better separation. The E is also influenced by the presence of gases. 
If there is quite a lot of gases in milk, then the density of the plasma will be lower because gases is dissolved in plasma. The density of plasma is lower means then the difference in density of plasma and fat will be lower. Okay? And then the separation will be worse. So the, if there are gases in the milk, the separation will be not so good. And then depends on the season as well. Why the season influence the degree of cream separation? Maybe the season will determine the composition of the, the fat, uh, fatty acid composition inside, and then we determine the density of the fat phase. Okay. It may be also influence the size of the fat globules. If you have a large fat globules, then the separation will be better. If you look here, the stock equation. If you have large fat globule, the separation will be better. Okay. So if the fat globule is smaller, it's more difficult to be separated. When we do cream separation, then there's still a small amount of fat still remain in the separated milk, in the skim milk. We cannot separate 100%. And that remaining fat is normally uh, contain the lipoprotein particle, some, some fragment of MFGM, or some very small fat globules. When they are very small, it become difficult to separate. And then the other factor is the quality of raw milk. If the milk is quite old, then the hydrolysis of fat may occur. We may have free fatty acid in the milk, and this one cannot be separated by the centrifuge. And then we move to the further application of centrifugation before we start for today. This is the bacterfuge. Bacterfuge is a centrifuge which is applied to do bacterfugation. What is that? Bacterfugation again? We just saw it a while ago. Bacterfugation is centrifugation, but not to separate the cream, but to separate the spores, the bacteria to remove spores of bacteria. And it's called, it's also the same principle of working, but for different purpose, different applications, so they call it different name, bacterfuge. So you see here, this is the milk. The milk enter the system and the machine has similar structure. And then this will rotate very fast. And then the output milk is here. The spores of bacteria which have higher density, the spore, the spore has more dry matter compared to milk, so they have higher density. So the spore is directly pushed to the border here. You see the, the red here is just illustration of the direction where the spore come here. Uh, the spore will come out here and time to time, there is a vans here, time to time this van is open to take out the part of milk and this milk has a lot of spores okay more spores than this this milk okay these are the tags the bacter field is applied to remove the spores of bacteria and then based on the density difference and this is called low pasteurization means that you can do the low pasteurization but then you apply this step to remove part of the spot to increase the cell life. We will talk somewhere else. Normally, heat pasteurization cannot destroy spot. But when you apply this, you can remove part of spot. You can increase the cell life. Bacterfugation is by no means equivalent to sterilization. What does this sentence mean? means that if we do sterilization, we destroy the level of destruction of spore is much higher for sterilization than for bacterfugation. For bacterfugation, you remove only a certain level, not a lot. Sterilization, for example, you remove 10 power 12 times. 12 locks means 10 power times, means what is that? A thousand billion times. 10 power 9 is a billion. Temple travel is a thousand billion. 
So when you do sterilization, you reduce number of spore up to this time. The for bactrification is much lower. Then when you do pasteurization, I already mentioned this, uh, you cannot destroy spore. So and then you apply this, you remove part of the spore, then you have better cell light of the pasteurized product. You also have the milk with lower spore. This is good for making cheese, for making cheese, because if the milk has spore during ripening of cheese, during ripening of chi, the spore will germinate into the living cells and the living cell will grow and this will grow to produce some gas and they produce gas means they call lake blowing. Lake blowing là thổi khí. They produce so much gas that they break the chi. They break the chi inside like this because the gas inside is produced a lot and this is caused by clastidia by the spores of bacteria from the beginning. When you do this, you can prevent this one. And this is good for ripening cheese. Right, so we are done with centrifugation. Now, I go back to review before we stop. We start from here. Centrifugation now is a process that we use an instrument to generate the centrifugal force, the force which bring material away from the center. So the one which have higher density will be impacted more by the force, so will be bring further to the border of the instrument. And because of that, that part is there, so it push the one with lower density going backward to the center. And then we can separate into two fractions. Okay, so centrifugation is applied in dairy industry, what to separate the cream away the skim meal. And then after that, they can combine the cream again at a certain level to have a certain fat content in the final product. Centrifugation then can be also applied to remove the spores. And this process is called bactofugation. It's a special centrifugation. Okay. And then we already discussed the, um, the stock law, but now we do centrifugation. The, this equation now will just tell us what are the factors inside we determine the performance of a centrifuge. There are two types of centrifuges, the tubular bowl centrifuge, the old model, and the right side, the disposed centrifuge, which is applied nowadays in factories, uh, not only in dairy factory, but in other factory where the centrifugation step is needed. Okay. And then what are the parameters of centrifugation? Of course, the first one is the rotation speed. But normally the machine is fixed with this. We cannot discuss. So we discuss the temperature is an important parameter. Centrifugation is carried out for milk at 45 to uh, f to 55 degrees C, not 4 degrees C, because there are a number of reasons. The reason is why we already discussed, you need to memorize. Performance of, uh, of cream separation is determined by an E value, and the E is influenced by several factors. And you need to understand that I already explained. Uh, we also talk about back to fuel, which is an instrument to do bactrophugation. And remember, bactrophugation is just remove a certain level of spore. We not remove a lot of spore compared to sterilization. So means that the in sterilization, you can remove spore up to a point. You can consider as no more spores inside. Theoretically, you cannot remove 100%. But commercially, you can say it, no more spore. Okay? That, that, that is for sterilization. But for bactrophagation, you remove only part of it, but that already very good. Uh, to add the cell line to pasteurized milk, for example, we will see in some uh, next chapter. Or to remove the spore in milk for making cheese. Because if there's spore or clotidia in the milk for making cheese, then during the ripening step, the spore will germinate into cells, will grow, will breed gas, and will cause cracking. Uh, we call it lake blowing la noite. Yes, so we are done with centrifugation. Instead of asking you question, I review it very fast like that.